take that to stateroom 76M. Get me a good table in the dining room. Reserve a seat at the ship's concert. Place a two dollar bed in the ship's pool. And find me a young fellow named Billy Croker. He's got my passport. Will you step this way, Mr. Whitney? We'd like to have a picture of you. Elijah J. Whitney, you know, Wall Street. Okay, we're through you, Mr. Whitney. Who's next, Charlie? Again, no time to waste. Sir, Sir Oakley, you and Miss Harcourt, right here, please. Society staff. What are their names? Sir, what's your first name? Evelyn. Not her first name, your first name. I repeat, it's Evelyn. This is my fiance, Miss Hope Harcourt. Get a good rotor shop. They're sailing to be married on the other side. Is this where we stand? Look, he can't marry both of you. Which one's the bride? This is Mrs. Harcourt. <laughs> Oh, please feel free to call me mother. Radio, mother. Sorry, Mrs. Harcourt, we want to get a picture of the happy couple. Hey, Miss Look Happy, say cheese. Hey, Edith, put your arm around her. I'm afraid this is the best we can do. Okay, do you remember which one side? Who are they? Oh, missionary and a couple of Christians. <laughs> Nobody put that stuff, get us a gal. Hey, girl, you want to get your picture in the paper? All right, then, get in there and do yourself, kid. Oh, and Bishop. Give me a little dope on yourself. The name is Henry T. Dobson, DC, PH, LLD, moderator of the Chinese Anglican Church, President and Murders of the Foreign Missionary, Societies of the World, Honorary Champion of the Army of the Chinese Republic, author, lecturer, President of the Westminster Conference. A swell story for our Chinese edition. How about my photograph? We want one of you to come at the gangplank. No, are they sailing? <laughs> Who is it they're making such a fuss about? Reno Sweeney, the famous nightclub singer, and she's got her four angels with her. Oh, the former evangelist. There's no longer anything exclusive about an Atlantic crossing. Miss Sweeney, how about some poses for the Globe American? I don't care what side you take, sweetie, as long as you get my good side. First the old personality girls, give them the teeth. How about another one? The Hallelujah Girls. What's that for? I still do a bit of evangelizing in my spare time. You meet a hell of a lot of sitters around a nightclub. Okay, sister, we don't wings. We want legs. I'll compromise, sugar. I'll give you a leg and a wing. Anything to the rumor that you're marrying him, C. Brown? There was some talk of it, but he got eliminated from the semifinals. Billy, baby, where have you been? Hi, Hi Billy. Billy. I've been busy getting your new cabin ready. You've got the new suite reserved for traveling royalty. Thanks a million, Billy. What would I do without you? You'll be finding out in just about 10 minutes. Lordy, Lordy, I wish you were coming along. Amen. Amen. Billy, where the devil have you been? Why, boss, hello. How's the stateroom? Terror, no. Oh, and never mind about that. Where have you been these last two weeks? In Washington, taking care of your new passport. You know the new deal, boss. Do you know who's sitting with you? No, who? Reno Sweeney. Reno Sweeney? I've told her all about you. She's dying to meet you. Reno, this is my boss, Mr. Elijah J. Whitney. Hello, Sinner. Sinner, I'd like to be. Great sense of humor. Meet the angels, purity, chastity, charity. And I'm virtue. The easy kind. How do you do? <laughs> Say hello, girls. Hello. 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 The cocktail bombs as soon as the ship sets sail. I'd love to meet you for a drink. Say goodbye, girls. Goodbye. 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 If I'm not in the chapel, I'll be in the bar. Oh, boss, what a trip you're going to have. All these beautiful women, and you're right in the middle of them. Now, am I the greatest general manager, or am I not? You're not. You're fired. Again? Yes, again. Consider yourself fired in the sense of being through, done, kaput, washed up, finished, through. That was me being fired. Great, then you're coming to London with me. That's the best offer I've had since I've been unemployed. How long will it take you to pack? Well, there's my other shirt. Billy, you're great. You could sing, you could dance, you're my new master of ceremonies. Reno, I don't think so. Why not? I think you'd be marvelous. Well, you're the one who's got all the talent. Tell me more. You're beautiful, smart, sexy. True, true, tell me more. I'm running out of words that can do you justice. <laughs> Uh, 
words poetic I'm so pathetic I always have found it best Instead of getting them off my chest To let them rest unexpressed I hate parading my serenading As I'll probably miss a bar So if my titty is not so pretty At least it'll tell you how great you are You're the top You're the Coliseum You're the top You're the loser You're the Nile, you're the Tower of Pisa, you're the smile on the Mona Lisa. I'm a world champ, a total wreck of love. But if, baby, I'm the bottom, you're the top. Your words poetic are not pathetic. On the other hand, boy, you shine. And I can feel after every line a thrill divine down. Some critical meanie like Toscanini might think that your song is bad. But I got a notion, I'll second the motion, and this is what I'm going to add. You're the top. You're a silver dollar. You're the top. You're an arrow collar. You're the nimble tread of the feet of Fred Astaire. You're an O'Neill drama, you're a Whistler's mama, you're a Cabin Bear. Master, your lady Astor, your Chippendale. You're a rose. You're Inferno's Dante. You're the nose on the great Durante. I'm just in the way that the French would say de trop. But if baby, I'm the bottom. But if baby, I'm the bottom. But if baby, I'm the bottom. You're the top. You're a new invention. You're the top. You're the fourth dimension. You're the light of a summer night in Spain. You're the National Gallery, your garbo salary, your cellophane. You're romance. You're the steps of Russia. You're the pants on a Roxy Usher. I'm a golden a fall for all. A but if baby, I'm the bottom, you're the top. So are you sailing? No, Reno. Business before pleasure. But I thought you just got fired. That doesn't mean anything. He hires and fires me every eight minutes. The next thing he'll come out here and say, Billy, where the devil is my passport? Billy, where the devil is my passport? Right here, boss. I sure wish I was still working for you. I'd love to see those faces on those Englishmen when you clinch the amalgamation deal. Amalgamation deal? Billy, I forgot the papers. Don't worry, boss. I'll take care of it. You're hired again. What would I do without you? You just have a good time. We know I want you to make sure Mr. Whitney has a good time. I got four fallen angels holding up at the bar. Come, let us lead us beside distilled waters. Hope? Billy, you sailing on this boat? No, don't tell me you are. Yes, I am. Where have you been for the last three months? I've been going crazy trying to find you ever since that night. Uh, Billy, I have something to explain. Hope, dear! Hope, dear! The mother is calling for her young. Evelyn, this is Billy Croker. Put it there, Croker, old chap! Sir Evelyn Oakley, my fiancé. We're sailing to be married in England. Your fiancé? Yes. Sailing to be married? Yes. Then I'm sailing too. We'll be meeting again then. Again and again and again. All shore, going ashore. All shore, going ashore. <sighs> Billy, that was the last.
last whistle. <sighs> Reno, I'm sailing. So I see. I don't know how I manage. I haven't any ticket, money, or cabin. There's my cabin. I haven't any clothing. You'll borrow my nightgown. <sighs> Thanks. Ah, purser. Just the person I wanted to see. Can I have a word, purser? Excuse me, there's some FBI men waiting for me at the gangplank. FBI? What's happening, purser? A couple of gangsters are trying to get out of the country on this ship. I understand one of them is dressed as a preacher. A preacher? Say, I've seen that guy. He's just at the bottom of the gangplank. Come on, I'll show you. Fix the violin, fix the violin. Ooh, Bonnie, I'm scared to death of this thing. Why'd you gotta give me a minister's costume? Well, anyways, you got a board all right. <coughs> but I know I'll get into trouble in this getup. I don't see why I couldn't have been a cowboy or an Indian or something. Now you look great in that preacher suit, <coughs> Mooney. I'd hardly even recognize you myself. You just keep your head and we'll make a clean getaway. I'm gonna go find Snake Eyes. <coughs> no, the name is Henry T. Dobson. Hiya, bish. Are you going to the conference? The conference? Nah, I think we'll get a bit early tonight. I mean, the Westminster <coughs> conference. Uh, Westminster? I'm not really a Westminster. You see, I'm more from the East. What does it feel, Doctor? Why, I'm sort of a kind of a missionary, yeah. Missionary? Where? Way out in China. China? Way, way out in China. I served in China for years. Well, I wasn't exactly in China, you see. I was more in... Oh, I see. You were in Indochina. Yeah, that's it. I was in indoor China, and you were an outdoor. <laughs> we'll have lots to talk about ula, chinchou, or gato. I don't know, but I think it's downstairs. <coughs> <coughs> Mooney. Oh, gee, Bonnie, I'm already in trouble. Have the cops seen you yet? What cops? They're a couple on board, and they're looking for you and Snake Eyes. How'd you know? I've been trailing them. They told the captain they were looking for a guy dressed as a preacher. Ooh, you better take the violin. Where can I hide? Stay away from your cabin. What? They're gonna be watching that. Get into a group mixed with passengers. I'll find you later. Passengers. 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 Mix into a group of passengers. Passengers. Mix into a group of passengers. Passengers. Uh, passengers. Uh, passengers. Uh, well, where can I find some passengers? Oh, passengers. 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 Oh, Evelyn, I'm so anxious to meet your mother. No, that reminds me. I must send mother a wireless. Yep, always keep in touch with Maida. She's a man's best friend. Mother has been horribly upset with all this delay. Oh, I'm sure she'll understand. I wrote to her about Hope's poor health. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, you never appreciate health until you lose it. Really? Oh, uh, yeah, I used to have, uh, palpitations in the pulpit and cramps in the crypt. Let's move up towards the front of the ship. Yeah, let's. Doctor, do you mind converting someone else? <sighs> what did he look like? How tall was he? There he is. Arrest that man. Come on, Moonface. You're not sailing on this boat. What is this? Help! I protest. The name is Henry T. Dobson. Help! <laughs> bon voyage! You need bon voyage! <laughs> Well, we're on our way. You're telling me. All that commotion hit me from some people I did not want to see. Yeah, I couldn't say goodbye to myself. I couldn't say goodbye to this girl, and now I'm in a hell of a mess. Excuse me, doctor. Uh, that's all right. I don't give a damn. Hey, wait a sec. You did me a favor. Maybe I can do you one. I'm afraid not, doctor. My troubles aren't spiritual. They're financial. Oh, well, if it's money you want, I can get you some of that, you see? The fellow who's standing with me has about 50 grand with him. Very easy going with the two. Time was when he used to make his stuff himself. Really? Yep. Money. <coughs> uh, did you see Snake Eyes, I mean, Mr. Hill? That's what I come to tell you about. Uh, did the cops, I mean, did they forcibly retain him? I don't know about that. He just never showed up. Just left me here holding his ticket and passport. Say, is that a ticket? That's just as good as money. Oh, well, if it's a ticket one, then here you go. Thanks, Reverend. Kind of you. And, uh, what about the passport? God help me if they ever look at this picture. Uh, we can fix it so it resembles it. But a little scar here, 
But your hair pretty nose. Let's not be hasty. I could break it slowly. Mooney, fix me up. What? Fix me up. Oh, uh, yeah, this is Barney. You two ought to get acquainted. After all, you two are going to be roommates. Roommates? Yeah, she goes to Miss Hill's ticket. If you don't mind, Doctor, I'll bunk with you. Gee, Mooney, it's going to be awful lonesome in that big cabin, all by myself. Now, Barney, don't break down to this. It's bad enough being a minister. Isn't it lovely? Um... Look at the ocean in the moonlight. Um... Isn't it beautiful? Um... A bit overdone, I should say. And the moon is overdone too, I suppose. No, it's all right for what it is, but I never really shared the general enthusiasm for the moon. Evelyn, here we are on the deck of a ship in the moonlight. Doesn't that mean anything to you? Sorry, old dear, but until I get my sea legs, I'm afraid I just can't rise to it. Oh, the Okalays are bad sailors. Hello there. I hope I'm intruding. No, not a bit. I was, we were just about to call it a night. I'd call it a night. As far as I can see, there's only one thing wrong with it. Yes, I was just saying, there's a bit of a roll. Oh, we'll be fine once we get past the Narrows. That's the roughest place on the coast. How soon till we get there? You'll know when we do. Oh, oh, feel that roll? It's starting. Oh, I think I must go prepare myself for death. Oh, and you hope... Uh, well, I... Uh, oh, there it goes again. Oh, and here I go. Toodaloo! <laughs> Was that fair? Fair? I find you standing out here on the deck with him. I didn't shoot him. I didn't push him overboard. I think I was more than fair. Look, Billy, you've got to stop this. We met one night, one single night at a party. We danced, we had a little too much wine, and we took a little spin around the park. A little spin? You called 12 hours in the back of a taxi a little spin? Nine hours. 12. Nine with you, and three with, the, uh, with me trying to pay off that thug that was driving. Well, I spent three hours trying to explain to Mother, and you weren't much help. I was very nice to your mother. Nice? Telling her you were George Bernard Shaw? I wanted her to know you were in safe hands. Well, she wasn't amused. You better stay out of her way on this trip, Billy. She hasn't forgotten or forgiven you for that night. I see you've forgotten. What's this nonsense about a fiancé? It isn't nonsense, Billy. Sir Evelyn and I have been engaged for a long time. Hmm. Except nine hours one night. Well, as far as I can tell, this seagoing hack is a big improvement over that taxi cab. Even the moon is doing better by us. It's getting late, Billy. I'd better call it a night. <sighs> Wait. Just five minutes. Just one quick spin around the deck. I remember what happened the last time we took a quick spin. Hope, here we are on the deck of a ship in the moonlight. Doesn't that mean anything to you? Young, the skies are clear. And if you like to go walking, dear. It's delightful. It's delicious. It's lovely. Cause so am I It's delightful It's delicious It's lovely You can tell at a glance What a swell night This is for romance You can hear dear mother nature murmuring Let yourself go so My chick of heat And when I kiss you Say to me It's delightful It's delicious It's delectable It's delirious It's dilemma It's the limit it's deluxe, it's the lovely. I feel a sudden urge to sing The kind of ditty that invokes the spring So control your desire to curse While I crucify the verse This verse I've started seemed to me The timp antithesis of melody So to spare you all the pain I'll skip the darn thing and sing the refrain. Me, 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 me. Ray, 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 ray. Don't saw me, don't laugh, see. Time marches on. Wait, you've got my heart. I've lost my brain. It's delightful. It's delicious. It's lovely. Life's 
groom. Oh. yourself go so sweet my chick of me and when I kiss you just say to me it's delightful it's delicious it's delectable it's delicious it's the lemma it's the limit it's the lux it's the Put it. Most of the breakfast in bed, sir. Oh, I guess that's all right. You don't need to get undressed, sir. Oh, that's an even better idea. I sleep right here. I nearly fell off when we went around that curve last night. <sighs> what a night this has been. What a dawn. What a sunrise. What on earth are you doing up there? Oh, this is where you eat breakfast in a boat. Doc, you got to help me out. I need new clothes. Shirts, shoes, ties. One thing at a time. Shoes. Hi, could you tell me what cabin Mr. Elijah J. Whitney is in? 76M? Thank you. Here you are. The corridor was full of them. <sighs> Doc, we've got to change our cabin. Why, I like it. It's very cozy in here. My boss is in the next cabin. Oh, you mean the gray-haired guy with the short-sighted glasses? Yeah, and if he sees me here and not back running Wall Street, he'll kill me. Maybe if I swipe his glasses, he wouldn't be able to seize you. Brother, I don't know about you, but you're a Christian. Well, uh, we met at the cloak uh, have our frivolous moments. Oh, steward! Steward! Oh. Glasses. <clears throat> Were you calling for the steward? I thought I made that clear to everyone on this boat. Well, I sent them around the corner for something. Why don't you wait here? I do know nothing of the kind. If I don't get up in deck in a minute, it won't do me a bit of good. The motion of the boat oh, is beginning to get to me. Seasick, so eh? Why don't you take off your glasses? No! I'm in no mood for anything cute. I may need you later, but for now, I'd rather suffer alone. Well, uh, if you need anything, I'm in the next cabin. What the hell's in here? Flying fish? Uh, no, it's a seagull. Shoo, shoo, and don't come back. I happen to be a minister of all occasions. You know, a funeral or something? Will you get the hell out of here? You're making me nervous. Hey, wait a sec. I see you have in the wrong hat. Can you read the initials right here? Where the hell are my glasses? Are you sure you had them when you barged in here? Sir, this is my stateroom. Then what am I doing in here? I've never been so insulted in my whole life. Why don't you put on your other glasses? I don't have another pair. Could this weather want her to know? Pair. Great. <coughs> knock, knock. Hi, Bonnie. If you'll excuse me, I have to see a man about a new suit. Good morning, Mooney. Hi, Bonnie. How was your night? Not bad at all. I met the cutest sailor. I feel safer out here in the ocean if I've got a sailor handy. Who is it? The purser. Oh, coming. Sorry to disturb you, doctor, but does James Hill occupy this cabin? Uh, not very often. Is there anything wrong? I think I ought to warn you, Doctor. He's not James Hill. He's Snake Eyes Johnson, public enemy number one. 
You're kidding. No. We arrested one of his confederates before we sailed. If you see him, come and tell me. And if you can't, send the little girl under the covers. Gee, Mooney, what if they grab Billy for snake eyes? He'd have to take the rap. We can't let that happen. Besides, I kind of like the fella. Oh, Moonface, you're just an old softy. All <laughs> set for the trip. Good. Now listen, mister, I'm afraid we're in a hell of a jam. Uh-uh-uh, doctor. I'll have to tell your minister on you. <clears throat> well, that's exactly where to start, you see? I'm not really a priest. I'm not really a minister. I'm a crook. I'm wanted in America. I'm Moonface Martin. Nonsense, doctor. What would they want another crook in America for? You don't realize <coughs> who he is. Moonface is public enemy number 13. We don't have to mention numbers. Now, no. Mooney, I've told you, with me to help you, when the new list comes out, you're going to be six or seven. Now that's a tie. Will you listen to me? <sighs> Not now, Doc. Some other time. Make him listen, Moonface. Make him listen. All right, you listen to me or I'll blow your head off. Well, what the hell have you got there, Doc? Well, it's my old pal, put, put, put. Well, put, put, put it away, will ya? Listen, I'm not gonna turn you in. You're my pal, but I've gotta get up on deck. <sighs> this is exactly what I've been trying to tell you, you see? The fella who, uh, in the passport? That's Snake Eyes Johnson. Snake Eyes Johnson? Snake Eyes Johnson? Is there a knuckle in here? What are they gonna do if they find me? Well, there's been some talk about, um, electrocuting Snake Eyes. Great. They'll go right through the passengers list till they find you. But they'll never think of looking in the crew. Now that's an idea. Bonnie, could you get me a sailor suit? Sure, I could get you a sailor suit. He's still asleep. <laughs> hey, aren't you one of Reno Sweeney's angels? Me? An angel? Oh. Well, I know a few shortcuts. Thank you.
Hope, I'm tired of this chasing around the boat. Let's find the deck store and get our chairs placed. But Mother, I don't want to sit down. Well, I should think you'd want to rest, staying up on deck with Evelyn until 7 o'clock this morning. I told you, dear, that under the proper conditions, you'd find Evelyn romantic. Now, Mother, you go get our deck chairs. I'm going to explore the boat some more. I'll find you. Ah, oh, there you are, Hope. I don't know how you young people do it after staying up all night. Did you stay up all night? Shame, shame, shame on you, you, you. Mother, have a chair for Evelyn, placed next to ours. Now, Evelyn, you mustn't keep Hope up all night, every night. You see, it wasn't until after seven when you brought her to the stateroom this morning. I say, really? Still, I mustn't forget, I was once in love with your father, the old buzzard. <laughs> well, Evie, what are you going to say to me? What about? Well, you know now that I didn't get to my cabin until 7 o'clock this morning. Well, where were you? Here on the deck in the moonlight. Not alone, I hope. No, that's just it. <sighs> oh, with that old chappy I left you with. Did he stick it out with you? Damn decent of him. Evelyn, aren't you angry? Why should I be angry? I got my Betty by, you got your moonlight. Perfect night for both of us. Well, if you must know, it was perfect. You know what I'll do? I'll look that chappy up and buy him a drink. He probably needs it, poor devil. Sailor, come back here. How dare you? Ta-da! What on earth are you doing in those clothes? I've joined the Navy. To see the world, I suppose. No, to see you. Well, you didn't have much difficulty last night. And tonight's going to be even easier. I found places on this boat even the captain doesn't know about. I've got a lot to talk to you about. For instance? Well, I love you. Did I say anything about that? I think the subject came up. And I'm going to marry you. Did I mention anything about that? Yes, but let me remind you, I'm still happily engaged. Sailor, what are you doing there? Follow me. Aye, aye, sir. See, I even disobey orders for you. I hope you enjoy Mr. Good ship, Mrs. Harcourt. I've never been so bored in my life. Mrs. Harcourt, I'm making 24 knots. I'm not interested in rope tricks. It's the dullest passenger list I've ever seen. No one of importance, no celebrities on board. There's Reno Sweeney. She's not famous, she's notorious. I'm like the better that way. <laughs> Hope, did you see that? Yes, thank you. Oh dear me, I forgot to ask the captain about the seagulls. The seagulls? Sailor, where do the seagulls go at night? Uh, why, the, the gullery, madam. The gullery? Where is the gullery? Forward, madam, on E-deck. The gullery mate will be happy to show you. Come, Hope, darling, you must go and see it. I'm coming, mother. Don't, don't walk so fast. God, I this way. Hey, sailor, is this your big toe? Oh, oh, it's you. Nobody's ever going to recognize you in that outfit. You think so? Hi, Billy. Hi, Hi Billy. Billy. Well, if you're not the lousiest looking sailor I've ever seen. Hi, at Moonface. That makes both our disguises perfect. Moonface Martin, the slickest con man in all 46 states. I'd know you anywhere. Hi, Reno. <coughs> he may be a con man, but he's my pal. I knew Mooney was under wraps, but I didn't know your face was decorating U.S. post offices. Yeah, the ship's officers are looking for me. They think I'm Snake Eyes Johnson. Snake Eyes Johnson? Snake Eyes Johnson? Is there an echo in here? Yeah. He didn't make it, so the dock here gave me his ticket. Maybe I could fix you up some camouflage. If you really want to help me out, there's something else I'd rather you do. Anything for you, Bailey. Say it and it's done. Could you take an English accent off my hands? Steam him up, get him out of the way? Who is the guy? Sir Evil Clay, the, the man who thinks he's going to marry my girl. Well, the only way to get rid of that guy is to bump him off. No, no rough stuff, Doc. Look, Reno, all you have to do is make a play for him. I'll try, Billy, but no promises. Uh, uh, yes, madam, downstairs, the <coughs> first quarter on your right. There you are, doctor. Have you seen Mr. Hill? Uh, as a matter of fact, I think I just saw him walk into the mizzenmast. We don't have a mizzenmast. 
Uh, then it must have been someone else. Never mind that. Sailor, come with me and help me find this man. Aye, 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 sir. <coughs> Who's he looking for? He's looking for Billy. Well, Billy has to be a big help to him. Say, you know the English accent he's been talking about? Yeah, I recognize him when he talks. He has a monocle in his throat. Ah, oh, there you are, Doctor. <coughs> I mean, oh, hell, I mean, <coughs> hello. Are you taking a sabbatical abroad? Oh, that ain't my sabbatical. That's Reno Sweeney. <laughs> Not the Reno Sweeney. Oh, give me an intro, old chap. Miss Sweeney, I'd like you to meet him. <laughs> Hi. My name is Evelyn Oakley, and I am delighted to meet you. I spent an evening at your nightclub once, quite eventful. It was there that I proposed to my fiancé. You mean propositioned. Is that what you Americans call it? If it's in my nightclub, it's propositioned. Well, your music seemed to stir me, set my pulses racing. I knelt right down to her, and right then and there I propositioned. I said, shall we get married in a year or two? I think you ought to give him his money back. Shall I go find her? She'll be so delighted to know I've met you. Please do. Shall we have cocktails in my room? Say, one o'clock? I love it. All right, I'll go get Miss Harcourt. Cheery bye. You were just great, Reno. You kept them out of Billy's hair for nearly a minute. Relax, Moonface. I got a date with him, haven't I? Yeah, but you can't do anything in front of his girlfriend, you know? Three's a crowd. I say, uh, why don't you get in his cabin early or something? Get him to run in a temperature. These Englishmen have high boiling points. Yeah, I guess that's true, too. Then, uh, wear a dress that slips off easily, and I'll bust in and accuse him for tearing your clothes off. Get thee behind me, Moonface. I kind of like this guy. He's different. Barino, you promised Billy. That almost persuades me to shoot the works. You know, if you weren't Billy's friend, I wouldn't unfrock you. <laughs> like I told you, there's a time and place for every. You know what? What? We didn't find me. I met your beef eater. He talks cute. What does he do for a living? He doesn't work, Reno. He's a gentleman. That but gentleman stuff sounds bad. Maybe I could cure him of it. Now, if you can just keep him away from Hope and the doc here keep the purser out of my hair, I've got it made. <coughs> you can count on me. We're a team, Billy, through thick and thin. Night and day. Right or wrong. <coughs> If you're ever in a jam, here I am. If you're ever in a mess, yes, no way. If you ever feel so happy you land in jail, I'm your bail. It's friendship, friendship, just a perfect friendship. Another friendship's a bit forgot. I'm so still be hot. La la la, chick chick chick.
What do you Can you stop about? yelling at me? Another sentence has been forgotten. Ours will still be hard. Quack, quack, quack. Come in. Yes, may you bring me some tea? And please make it a pot of tea. And I don't want those tea bags dangling over the side. And Stuart, make it snappy. Yes, make it snappy. Come in. Just put it down on the bed. I hope it's nice and hot. <laughs> you know, I really wanted it before I started to get dressed. Same, I earlier met late. Oh my god, I thought it was the stool with my tea, but I'm delighted it's you. We have oodles of time until dinner, and I did so want to chat. I'm glad you feel that way, because I feel that way about you too. What way? You know, that way. What strange expressions you Americans use. I'm keeping a journal of them. To feel that way about someone means to rub their shoulders. I don't think I'm getting through. Look, one look at you and I get hot pants. Hot pants? Would a bit of ice do any good? I don't think I'm getting through. Look. You're a man, I'm a woman. Man, woman. You, me. Yes, <coughs> what does that have to do with it? A hell of a lot. Evie, you excite me. I excite you? How marvelous. Aha! Uh -huh. And this is what I find. You tore this poor child's clothes off on a fiendish attack. Look at her standing there in her nakedness. Why do you got a gun? There's something wrong here. There's nothing wrong here. Everything's strictly on the up and up. Wait a minute, I'll be right back. Aha! <laughs> uh -huh. In your clothes are torn off on a finish attack on this poor child. Well, wait a minute. No, I will not permit this British line to twist the tail of an American womanhood. Huh? I'll be right back. <sighs> come, come, Padre. You're an old dear and you know it. No, this is serious business. I happen to be a serious man. This is serious business, okay? I'll be right back. <laughs> What's wrong with that little fellow? Listen, Evie, I'll t give you the lowdown, even if I have to take the rap for myself. He was set to catch us in the clinch, and you didn't clinch. You mean you and me and then... Yeah, that was my idea when I came in here. Whew, that is exciting. Aha! <laughs> uh -huh. And this is what I find. You see, this is serious business, you know? It's all right, Padre. You thought I'd take advantage of Miss Sweeney, and you came in here to s rescue her. Oh, I admire you for that. Oh, you know... I wish I could tell you how much I admire you for that. Say, I have hot pants for you. Don't judge me or I'll shoot. <laughs> Where's Simone? Why, I've never been so humiliated in my entire life. Why, what happened? Well, He took me to his cabin and showed me how to put a little boats in bottles. You can never trust a man these days. Oh, hello, Reno. I've been looking for you all day. Where have you been? Walking on deck. I wanted to talk to you about auditioning for one of your angels. I'm not in the mood to talk business now. I got an Englishman on my mind. Oh, Sir Evelyn? Yeah. Well, good luck. Thanks. I'm gonna need it. Much too sad to be told, but practically everything leaves me totally cold. The only exception I know is the case when I'm out on a quiet spree, fighting mainly the old ennui, and I've suddenly turned to see. Your 
I beg your pardon. Hey, did you hear me? I beg your pardon. I didn't know there was a parade. Oh. Hopey, dear, shall we sit here? Shall I tuck you into your trundle? Oh, I don't need the rug. Oh, you'd better let him tuck you in, my dear. It's very, very chilly out there. There's been a sudden change of temperature. I say, haven't you noticed? Haven't you noticed? Yes, I have. Oh, hello. What's your name? My name's Evelyn. Well, how do you do? I'm Mrs. George Bernard Shaw. <laughs> Are you ill, Hope? No. My dear, your hands are as cold as ice. We must be getting near an iceberg. I hate ice. I'm terribly afraid of it. You know, last year I fell right on my back porch. Really? You must be English. Quite. See, that's how I knew you were English. You say things like quite instead of yes, like any normal person. <laughs> I love the way you talk. Why don't you talk some more? Why don't you go somewhere and talk? Miss Shaw, do you mind? I think my fiancé needs a little bit of rest. Your oh, fiancé? You don't mean to tell me you're going to marry this dear young girl? Well, I must kiss the bride. I certainly must kiss the bride. Excuse me, madam, but you're sitting in my deck chair. Oh, that's okay, dearie. You can sit in mine. And that's my rug. <gasps> Sailor, what's going on here? One of the sailors disguised himself as a woman and took possession of my deck chair. We'll find him, madam, and I promise he'll be severely dealt with. They should clop him into a jolly pair of old arms. Nonsense. He was only having a bit of fun. There should be discipline on shipboard. Aye, aye. Women and children first and all that sort of stuff. Let us have a look, too. I'm sure I can identify the old brute. Rightio, mother. So for the remainder of the performance, Atticus is going to take Jasper's role and he's going to do the best he can. So Pardon me. Monsieur, your lunch. Oh, uh, I'm not hungry. I just took a nap. Wait, where'd your sailor suit go? <sighs> the purser caught me in that outfit. I need, a civil I need civilian clothes. Okay, chef. They're waiting for your order in the bar. I, feel so <sighs> I need a civilian jacket. Civilian jacket. Civilian jacket. Where? There! Where did he go? Where is he? Here you go! Thanks. If only I had a beard. Oh, lady, can I talk to you for a minute? Certainly, I saw you on deck and rather hoped me by become acquainted. You see, I recently organized a home for wayward girls. Give me a name or two. I might have known a couple of them. Try me with a name. There were so many. We used to have six, and now they're at least 70. That's one business ticket. It just keeps on booming. Well, Doctor, I've enjoyed a little talk, but now I must go and find my daughter. I'll be seeing you. at all. If the captain wants me to, I simply must. Excuse me, are you Mrs. Haircut? Harcourt, Mrs. Wadsworth T. Harcourt. Ah, bon chance. I was sent to you by my cousin, the Duke of Hanover. The Duke of Hanover? Oh yes, I met him in Paris. Yes, the French have been so nice to me, my poor exiled family since the revolution. Really? You have to take your hat off to the French. That's not all you have to take off to the French. Now, we must, since we've been acquainted, we must become, as you say, buddies. You and your beautiful sister. Oh, this is not my sister. My daughter. You tell Izzy to tell Your daughter? Oh, this cannot be. 
Oh, Hope, dear, I want you to meet this gentleman. This is my daughter, Miss Harcourt. How do you do? My name is Senor Arturo Antonio Graciola, but you can call me Your Excellency. And now I must leave you two to go and find the captain. Au revoir, tutaloo, a bientôt. Lovely woman, your grandmother. Yes, mother's very nice. I see you have guessed my secret. I am not Senor Arturo Antonio Graciola, no. I am George Bernard Shaw, and I've got the beard to prove it. <laughs> you idiot. <laughs> oh, Count. I hurried back to ask you if you'd like to join us for cocktails. Cocktails, cocktails. I love cocktails. Tell me, are you French or Spanish? Neither. I'm Chinchillian. Doctor, I've been looking for you. I'm afraid you're in a bit of trouble. I know I couldn't get away with this. It's about those two converts. Don't tell me those two nice girls are converts. I mean, your Chinese converts? My, oh, my Chinese, my Chinese converts. Of course, of course. My Chinese converts. We don't allow gambling in the third class. You'll have to make them understand that, or we'll have to lock them up. I've sent for them. They're going to be handed over to you. Here they are, sir. Can young hut me hung too, tao. I must, have, I must have said something. Do you mind? I think I'd better speak to these boys alone. We'll leave everything to you. Where's the bishop? Uh, the bishop stepped out for a few minutes. Is there anything I could do for you boys? This boss kept him. Spoil him game. Take away cards. Oh, yes. You boys have been gambling. Don't you know how you shouldn't gamble? Not only is it sinful, but if you don't know how to deal off the bottom, you lose all your money. We know lose. We win. $300. Oh, $300? You've got $300? Oh. There's a little game I'd like to show you. No. Neo-Christians. Now I've got like $50 in my pocket. I got put, I put my $50 down, and you put down your $300, just so it's even. Now, I throw a number. Oh, I forgot my dice. OK. Well, if I throw a number, pick a number from 1 to 10. If you get 7, I win. If you don't get 7, you win. 8. Oh, something's wrong here. Oh, and may the Lord watch over you uh, and make you better than men, uh, although you're pretty damn good already. All right. Thank you for your help, doctor. Take them below. Boys, before you go, give me back my dice. Oh, I forgot them. Never mind. <laughs> Would you like to join us in some trap shooting, doctor? Darn clever people, these Chinese. Anyway. I think there's been enough crap shooting these one day. Oh no, I mean trap shooting. Uh -oh. We take clay pigeons and send them off the stern, then shoot at them. Oh, that sounds jolly. And the winner gets a prize of $100. Oh, well, $100? Can I use my own gun? I get no cake from champagne. Oh. Pure alcohol doesn't. Oh. Thrill me at all. Paul! Miss! Paul! Miss! Paul! One hundred dollars! Doc, you gotta help me. My beard's falling loose and I'm running out of disguises. Well, I, better you, I think you could better keep that one. Here comes Lizzie Borden. Oh, Count, I didn't want you to get away from me. Oh, it is so nice to be once again in touch with beauty. Wait, I know you. You're George Bernard Shaw. I know who you are. You're Snake Eyes Johnson. Don't move, or I'll shoot. Disarm this man. He's obviously an accomplice of Snake Eyes Johnson. <gasps> There's something wrong here, Skipper. I know. Help me if you purse, sir. Surely you can send Mr. Johnson the popular character. We have a celebrity on board, after all. Welcome to our ship. But I... Uh, I suggest we all go to the bar and drink Mr. Johnson's health. Isn't this great? 
Alright, now I've practically got the full run of the ship. Now we can be together. Maybe I don't want to be with you. Hope! I enjoy a joke, but I can't love a clown. Do you know what? What? You're here of the ship. Yeah, to everyone but her. She'll come around. So bad for him. Can you improvise? I don't know, Reno. Yeah, I think this time I went I too far. Yeah. A funny man's okay for a laugh or two. Uh, but good old Evelyn's the solid type. I, I think I know the rest of it. All right. Okay. But good old Evelyn's the solid type. Are we going to skip the song? Because I don't know the song. I'll see him again. All right. But good old Evelyn's the solid type. I oh, don't know. I kind of like that Englishman, and who knows, if I play my cards right, I might wind up a lady, and that would be a miracle. We could both use a miracle.
We've got a public enemy on board. Let's celebrate. Let's step out. Oh, let's have a drink. There's no doubt this boat will sink. Oh. Mr. Whitney, Mr. Whitney, we've been looking for you. Oh, Dr. Livingstone, I presume. Oh. Um, <laughs> Mr. Whitney, you're lost. No, my dear, I'm not lost. It's the bar that's lost. Let's step out. Oh, let's have a drink. Oh. <laughs> oh, No, no, please, no more autographs. And Mr. Johnson, are you enjoying your new quarters? It's only two bedrooms and a bath, but if it's the best you have, I guess it'll have to do. Or if there's anything else, let me know. Well, there is one thing. I was wondering if I could prevail on you to release Dr. Moon from the brig. And Mr. Johnson is a dangerous character. He goes around carrying a machine gun. <laughs> no, no, he took it from me. That was mine. Did he try to reform you? He damn near made it. Listen, Doc. You'll, uh, you'll release him from the, uh, from the brig, won't you? As a favor to me. Then I have to have a good talk with him first. He's a bit strange of a clergyman. You wouldn't say that if you saw him in action. Then I, have to have, then I have to talk with him right now. If he is, as you say, a bit of a moral uplift, then there's no objection. How would you like to give us a little informal talk on jails I have known, Mr. Johnson? Why do they call you Snake Eyes, Mr. Johnson? Is it true that Japan does not dare attack America as long as you're alive? Cut it out. What are you trying to pull? Aren't you proud of yourself, Mr. Johnson? <laughs> you can call me Snake Eyes. Billy, this goes beyond living amusingly. I haven't had so much fun since I was a kid. So you call it fun to pose as one of the worst criminals who ever lived? It's not hurting anyone. It's hurting my respect for you. Well, what about your respect for these damn fools that are making a hero out of me? I never had any respect for them. But you, Billy, you can change it if you want to. All right. I'll tell them to lay off this hero business. I swear I won't have anything more to do with it. You mean it? I promise. Oh, Mr. Johnson, oh you can go ahead without me. You can't. You've got to come to Sumberbird. But I was just talking to him. A honeymoon cottage is not a castle make. Uh, Evelyn. Oh, there you are, Hope. Have you seen the moon? No, I haven't. Well, you should take a look. It's most inspiring. So you found your sea legs. Say, was that a crack of my pins? I'm sure she meant no offense. Boy, you're great stuff on deck. I bet you'd be hell in a taxi cab. You know, today, for the first time, I notice why people speak so highly of the moon. You know, Evie, when we get to England, I'm afraid I'll be carrying the old torch. Carrying the old torch? Have you been hearing that nonsense about the London fog? No, Evie, that means I'll be miserable without you. It does? Carrying the old torch. How picturesque. You know, if things worked out, I mean, would you want to get together? Get together? Become engaged? Get married? That could do for a new beginning. You know, Reno, I never saw you as the one-man type. Neither did I until now. But at least 20 men propose to you daily. Bankers, movie stars, and big politicians. And yet not one stirs my pulse. I like a man with class and dignity and savoir-faire. <laughs> Only one thing stops you, dear. You're too good, way too good. If you want a future, baby, why don't you get a past? Cause that fatal moment's coming at last. We're all alone, no chaperone can get our number. The world's in slumber, let this behave. There's something wild about you, child, that's Let's 
Somebody's bound to tell, but what the hell do we care? They say that bears have love affairs, and even camels were merely mammals. Let's misbehave! Oh, Miss Sweeney, I've been looking for you. We'd like you to handle the services. Which one, the Army or the Navy? No, the Religious Service. You'll be assisted by Dr. Moonhead to see if he on his behalf. If she's a man error. Hey, what's the idea with all these people? It ain't a trial, ain't it? Dr. Moon, Mr. Johnson told us what you've been doing for him. How much did he tell you? Doc, you're going to perform the service. The, which one, the Army or the Navy? The Religious Service. Don't worry. Oh, me? If anything goes wrong, I'll be right here. It's a cinch, Moon. You just follow me. Here are the ship's songbooks, Doctor. Can uh, anyone open? You're in safe hands, Doctor. Brethren. Oh, uh, brethren and sisterin. Friends, relatives, members of the DAR, the PTA, and the WPA. We are gathered here today to try to reform Snake Eyes Johnson, who stands beside me as a repentant sinner. Oh. Hallelujah! Hey, that ain't bad. <laughs> Just a second, Doctor. What was capital punishment? It was good enough for my father, and it's good enough for me. Right! right. Look at this poor sinner who stands beside me at war with his conscience, unable to find peace, and I ask you, do we want war? No! Do we want peace? No! What do we want? Hooray! <laughs> and yet, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hollow this man. It, it is that we should rather ask ourselves if he who throws the first stone wants to live in a glass house. Right. Great! For neither rain nor storm nor dark of night will deter these stone throwers from their appointed sto roaring sounds. Uh, yeah! Uh, yeah. <laughs> In other words, be kind to your friends. For if it weren't for them, you'd be a total stranger. In the, uh, yeah. words, in the words of the late warden Louis E. Dumas, there is no such thing as a bad criminal, only bad parents. Uh, yeah! yeah. As the warden said to me, you're only in for one well, to wait five. wait a minute. Brothers and sisters, I have heard the call. We are here to fight the devil. Uh, yeah. And I am here to lead the fight. Uh, yeah. I want you to turn to your neighbor saying, bless you, brother. Bless you, sister. Bless you, brother. Bless, bless you, sister. sister. There's only one way to fight the devil. And that's out in the open. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Who will be the first to say, I'm a sinner? I'm a sinner. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, boo! Thanks, brother. Who's next? I'm a sinner. She's telling us. <laughs> uh, you work the floor, brother Moon, urge them to unburden their souls. All right, all right. Who will be, who gives us the goods? Who's going to give us a real sin? Ooh. Sit down and give some real sinners a chance. Now I'll admit, I'm just cursed with beauty. That's been my problem. She's not confessing, she's advertising. Come on, get busy. Who'll give us a real confession? I know what sin is. I've been a sinner. I'll confess I was once astray. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, boop. That's more like it. Can we hear from another layman? Two, two, did I hear three? I'll make it three. Sold to the man with the bloodshot eyes. <sighs> Might I add a word? Speak up, brother. A long, long time ago, when I was in China, I met a girl by the name of Plum Blossom, whom I became very fond of. I was worried about you, brother, but I'm all right now. <laughs> Sir Evelyn, would you mind repeating that for the rest of us? Now, Mr. Johnson, it's your turn. After all, this is all being done for you. Yes, Mr. Johnson. We all know you've had a great many of women in your life. Go on, brother. You can top these guys. Yes, Mr. Johnson. <sighs> All right, you want a confession? I'll give you a confession. But first, there's something I want to say. There's one thing I haven't heard any of you say. That you're all proud to know me, proud to be on the same ship as me. You fight to shake my hand. And why? Because I'm a celebrity. What kind of a celebrity? The biggest murderer in the world. Well, the joke's on you, and you, and you, and you. I'm not public enemy number one. I'm not Snake Eyes Johnson. I'm William C. Croker, a broken down broker. Sailor, throw a stay in the brig. Oh, Billy. You're under arrest. 
What for? Still your first class chicken passport. Wait a second, wait a second. If you girls want a real public enemy to idolize, I happen to be Moonface Martin, public enemy number 13. Then you're going to be with him. Bonnie, Bonnie! Honey. There's a lesson for you sinners. Search your hearts, tune in with heaven, and sign off with Satan. Where will you be on your day of glory? Do you hear that playing? Do you hear that playing? Do you know who's playing? No, who is that playing? Why, it's Gabriel, Gabriel playing, Gabriel, Gabriel singing. Will you be ready to go when I blow my horn? Any card. All right, I'll take one for you. Now look at it. All right, I'll look at it for you. Now don't tell me what it is. I wonder what time it is. I have half past. Half past what? I don't know. I lost a little hand a while ago. Wonder what day it is. Well, it's Friday. We're in port. Oh, is that what it is? It looks like a dull day in Yonkers. 
five days in this terrible dump. It's one I haven't gone out of my mind. Oh, this isn't that bad. Have you ever been to the jail in uh, Cicero? I don't mean the new jail. I mean the old one. Can you cut it with the travel lectures, Doc? Uh, well, what about the jail in Fayetteville? It's the nicest little jail I've ever seen. Please, Doc. Uh, I was just trying to cheer you up. You know, I'm feeling a little heavy in here, too. I knew you were thinking about her. She's all I can think about. I even dream about her. Five days in this terrible dump. Five days, not even a note from her. She must be sick or something, or they've locked her up in her cabin. Don't worry. She probably hasn't even landed yet. And they'll probably only give you, like, ten years, so it won't be that bad. Great, Doc. You too. It's Bonnie. I gotta work fast. I have a sailor friend holding me up. They won't let me come to you. What are they gonna do with us? They ain't gonna let you out and they're taking you right back. Is there anything I can do for you? Bonnie, I've got to talk to Hope. I'll see if I can get my sailor friend to hold her up to the window. And uh, while you're at it, can you get some soda pop for down here for us? Yeah, sure. Hey, coming down. Get in there, inside. Hey, there ain't room for four in here. They'll just be in here for a couple of hours. Those two wiped out the whole third class in a crap game. So? You guys have been well, good, doing good with my dice. Welcome, friends. Here you are, kid. If there's anything else you want, let me know. Thanks. Hey, listen, you mug getting fresh, eh? Cut that out. Billy. Hope, how have you been? I've been frantic about you. I'm fine, but how are they treating you? Oh, it's swell down here. It's just that they wouldn't let me up to see you. 
What are they going to do with you? They're sending me on the first boat back to America. But I swear, I'll get on the first boat back to England. No, Billy, don't come back to England. Why? You're in love with me. Mother has insisted we get married even though I get married now. She's gotten the captain to agree to perform the ceremony on board. What am I supposed to say? Gee, it's been nice. See you later? I don't know. Billy, I do love you. Doc, she loves me. Oh, that's nice. I've got to find a way to stop that marriage. Yeah. What are we going to do? You know, these two get out in a couple of hours. Huh. Would you gentlemen mind standing? Where's my wedding dress? <gasps> Mine will do. Uh, Mine will fit, but I'm afraid the pencils strangle me. Where's the wedding dress? No. So, uh, you guys want to play a little poker? No money. Oh, no need money. You bet something you're wearing. You want to play a little strip poker? Yes. Hey, do you know how to play draw? Oh, we play draw well. All right, and we'll play stud. All right, so we shuffle the cards thoroughly. All right, so the point of the game is to take two down so that the other people don't see it. Billy, you're high. What do you bet? I bet coat. You bet coat? I bet coat. You bet coat? I bet coat. We all bet coat. All right. So, we shove the cards thoroughly yet again. And the point of the game is to get two of a kind, three of a kind, four of a kind, or five of a kind. So, uh, Billy, you're high. What do you bet? I bet pants. You bet pants? I bet pants. You bet pants? I bet pants. Calling all pants! Calling all pants! Why not? We did it right in New York, didn't we? New York. The more I travel across the gravel, the more I sail the sea, the more I feel convinced of the fact New York's the town for me. Its crazy skyline is right in my line. several hours and then I break down and say take me back to Manhattan
I'll be there in a minute. I'm about to make my first attack on England. Ah, oh, there you are, Reno. Might I have a word with you? Play your cards right, it might be forever. It could have been. Before. Before? Yes, you see, I'm to be married shortly. Not to hope. I'm afraid so. But I thought she and Billy were... I thought so too. And at first it upset me. But then I met you, and everything seemed so right. Hope and Billy, you and me. And now? And now it seems I'm wrong. She does not love Billy. She loves me. And how do you know? Well, Miss Harcourt came to me this morning and said she wants to be married right here on ship deck. She's crazy. I'm sorry, Reno. I must carry out my obligation, and it would be scarcely the gentleman thing to do. Gentleman has never kept the uh, woman cold on a cold winter's night. Listen, Evie, you do love me, don't you? I mean, I want to know now before I make the wrong decision. Yes, I'm afraid I do have hot pants for you. Not exactly the same thing, but it'll do. Listen, Evie, when you hear the captain say, speak now forever, hold your peace, you may hear a familiar voice. Reno. That's the name that goes with a familiar voice. Reno. Reno, might I ever see you again? Sooner than you think. Oh, Evelyn, there you are. We've been looking all over for you. You're sure you can manage the ceremony? Move, move, move. It's my first go at a marriage. I have quite a bit of experience in funerals. It shouldn't be too difficult. Evelyn, are you ready? Yes, I suppose so, Mother. Then I'll go fetch the blushing bride and we may begin. Don't run away now. Sir, even if you would. God, I can't run. We are gathered today over the bodies of... <laughs> we are assembled here to bring the bonds of holy matrimony. Stop! Stop words! What is this? <laughs> if you're coming in my Hong Kong references, I'm afraid you've chosen a bad time. You see, I'm about to be married. Sorry, not get married today. Why? <laughs> Why can he be no married? If lady with all pain our face will hold our really tongue, I talk, I tell all, I gonna tell you. What are you doing? It seems you're trying to stop your marriage. Well, that's a marvelous idea, but why? That's what I'm trying to find out. I have honor to introduce Wu Chang Moon, father of little Plum Blossom. Plum Blossom? And who is Plum Blossom? Yes, who is Plum Blossom? This is Plum Blossom. <laughs> Plum Blossom, little Chinese Cinderella. Until Sir Evelyn turned her into little Chinese tramp. What's that? Sir Evelyn take Plum Blossom to Rice Patty and bring back Plum Tart. Is this true, Evelyn? It's just the old Oak Lake curiosity. That's it. Evelyn was just sowing his wild oats. No, sorry, no so wild oats in China, so wild rice. <laughs> anyway, after a while come little orange blossom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Under the circumstances, I can't see how I can marry who. Nonsense, Evelyn. All these people want is money. Money, 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 money. See here, you chappies. I'll give you 1,000 pounds to clear out. Pounds of what? That's money. Five thousand dollars. Do not insult us with offer of filthy money. All right, two thousand pounds. Rich man cannot buy Chinese honor. All right, I'll make it five thousand pounds. Twenty dollars too. No, Evelyn, don't pay him. No amount of money can settle this great wrong. You, sir. English lady, speak to me. You are a relative of little Plum Blossom. Oh yes, very close relative. Then the only way to pay this debt of honor, Evelyn, is for you to offer him me. Marvelous idea. Hope? No. Offer accepted. Chinese honor saved. 
You're getting quite a girl, old boy. Why don't St. Evelyn do right wrong down to Plum Blossom? Oh, what about the pipe balls? Plum Blossom? Uh, uh, Reno, will you marry me? I thought you never ask. <laughs> uh, boss. Billy, what are you doing here? Uh, how, how's the trip been? Terrible. I lost my glasses and I've been blind for five days. So I've heard. So, what about the amalgamation deal? Oh, you don't want to get involved in that. I flew down here to tell you I landed two new accounts. The Harcourt interest and the Oakley account. Hmm. Matter of fact, this is Mrs. Harcourt. Mrs. Harcourt, I'd like you to meet my boss, Mr. Elijah J. Whitney. You know, Wall Street. Did you say Wall Street, Mr. Whitney? M Madam, may I tempt you to a little drink? Sir, liquor has never touched my lips. You know a shortcut? <laughs> now it's going to be two weddings. May I offer you the curry stand with turn boys and the ship as your, as your honeymoon? You may join Dr. Moon High Force you must turn with the authorities. But Captain, we've had a radiogram from Washington. Read it yourself. Moonface Martin, not wanted. Entirely harmless. When I heard a flee. Let me see that! <laughs> this is ridiculous! I've never been so insulted in my whole life! It's un American! <laughs> Reno, shall we practice misbehaving? You bet your sweet ascot. <laughs> As Confucius say, so li tao, do wing si. <laughs> if that means that I think it does, the answer is yes. <laughs> where did you say you were staying in London, Mr. Whitney? Dear lady, wherever you are. Well, doctor. Hey, don't touch me or I'll shoot! Body, body! What's the matter, Mooney? I'm not even a public enemy number 13 anymore. Oh, Mooney, that doesn't matter. You're the top. You're the Coliseum. No, I'm not a great romancer. I know that you're bound to answer when I 